Hi there, welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. Now this video is a Q&A session, one of our sort of monthly Q&As. But for those of you that sort of follow the channel and understand what we're doing, uh, you'll see that on 13th of April uh, 2021, if you're watching this that, uh, that way ahead, um, I took part in a, in a video as part of Tank Week on World War II TV. Now, World War II TV is run and hosted by an old friend of mine, Paul Woodage, a Normandy Battlefield Guide, doing absolutely superb work, basically running a full TV channel for World War II subjects uh, ever since the restriction, the pandemic restrictions came in. You know, Woody's income was significantly hit by that as a Battlefield Tour Guide, Battlefield Tourism dropped, uh, but he stepped up and, you know, has not used his time unwisely. He's got many of our community together uh, pulled them together and you know hosting videos on world war ii tv which is excellent so if you can support woody through patreon please do you know world war ii tv ww2 tv uh is is the, is the name of the channel um and equally you know if you're not already supporting us on patreon then patreon.com forward slash vickers mg will take you to us so if you can support us and woody that would be absolutely brilliant um it will help us all having been affected by this sort of drop in income and the additional output that we're putting together uh now this the video that i did do for woody was um of course vickers mg related and was about british tank guns the small ones so not the main armament uh well apart from perhaps the vickers 0.5 uh, but you know, I was talking about the secondary armament, the machine guns that you get used on British tanks. Now, clearly, there's some overlap then now with the US tanks because I talk about Brownings. Um, but what happened in that video is we had an hour and six minutes there, 40 seconds of talking through things. We managed to answer some of the questions that happened in the sidebar on the evening, but some were obviously missed. So what I thought I would dedicate this Q&A session to covering off those questions uh, from the sidebar, trying to answer in a bit more detail putting on screen some of the archive material that we've got as well to support my answers as you've got to love references if you're an academic um, and hopefully just provide something a bit more interesting as a follow-up to, to British tank guns so let's see what questions come up obviously one of the first questions there from the armorer's bench facetiousness at his best you know had I mentioned the Vickers yet of course I have I'm sat in front of loads of them Matt um, for, for those that don't follow the armorer's bench, if you want something wider than the Vickers machine gun, really interesting subject matter, please do go and follow Matt um, and, and, and Vic at the armorer's bench and you'll find much more material there as well. Not a question from Ice Coffee 13, but I have to jump on this. Evening from Alton Towers, waiting for my kids. Alton Towers was an officer cadet training unit for uh, for one of the machine guns, uh, one of the machine gun um, officer cadet training units where junior officers, subalterns, would go before they were dispatched to their machine gun battalions. You know, Alton Towers, if you're ever going around in the central castle or the central house, there is a plaque on the wall for, I think it's 160 OCTU. You know, our, our, we've got information on our website about that. Alton Towers have engaged with us a little bit on on social media about that but please do if you go in there and you want something to do and you're not into rides go and have a look at the plaque in the memorial the great dominion comes up with the first you know proper question of the session so why wasn't the vickers 303 adapted for use in world war ii tanks instead of resorting to the use of the visa did it really have to be water cooled now I, 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 there's sort of two questions in there that i can answer uh, the first was of course the vickers 303 was suited for use in world war ii tanks that's how it started out yeah you know, the, the picture on the screen is a vickers is a 303 um but what had been decided was that the Vickers was obsolete or obsolescent uh, by the late 1930s. And if you go to our Patreon and you do subscribe, then you'll be able to get access to all the Small Arms Committee minutes and Ordnance Board memoranda that discuss the trials for a replacement for the Vickers machine gun. Not just in tanks, where it had been for, for the last sort of 10, 15 years, but also for the infantry gun, for the medium machine gun. So they want to replace the Vickers entirely. We don't want a water-cooled gun. But what we do want is something that's capable of sustained fire and indirect fire uh, for barrage fire and all of those indirect fire tasks uh, that require you to put lots of ammunition into one place and suppress the enemy. Uh, the Vickers was suited to that because it was water cooled. The Bisa didn't work in that role and uh, it's tried and, and we did share some photos on the screen uh, and we'll put them up now of, the, of that purpose um, but 
we basically trialed the BESA, decided the BESA suited all of those needs apart from sustained fire. So it suited the requirements for the armoured fighting vehicle, just not for the infantry. Now, um, that meant that all of our tanks moving forward were designed to use with the BESA rather than the Vickers MG. Uh, you could use the Vickers MG as an air cooled gun if you really had to, but it does start to heat up after about 250 rounds. And we'll talk about that in a little in, um, pr uh, other times. Um, but you know, it, there were commercial air, 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 air cooled guns available as well, but you just didn't need to. They'd already decided the Vickers uh, was obsolete, so we wanted to move over to the Visa. Clearly, the Vickers itself would remain in service for another 30 years. So we got some of that stuff, uh, some of that decision wrong. Um, and it wasn't until the general purpose machine gun replaced it in the infantry role. Ice Coffee 13, it was still waiting for the kids at Orton Towers or would come back um, and asked the question, early tanks with Vickers in the desert, water or ammo, what would you need more? Well, I will always argue that water is more essential because if you run out of ammunition, what happens? You just stop firing and when you get more ammunition, you start firing again. If you run out of water, the gun will overheat. It will cause problems with the mechanism. You won't be able to fire ammunition even if you've got it. Um, that happens after about 250 rounds. The, the friction in the recoiling portions becomes too much for the pressure of the ammunition to push the recoiling portions to the rear and for the spring to fire it forward. We experience that with blank ammunition, let alone ball. And you know, as a result, you do need to use water if you're doing anything more than about 250 rounds. That water boils up after 600 rounds and then starts to, you, know, you lose a, a, a pint and a half for every thousand rounds. So you've got to keep water to supply to it to make sure it's used. I'll always argue that with a water cooled weapon, if you want to use that in its proper role, you need to keep it supplied with water. Pat 61 pops up with what was the rate of fire of the 0.5 inch Vickers? It was 500 to 600 rounds a minute, Pat. Um, that's clearly the cyclic rate of fire. You have a 100 round ammunition belt and it's unlikely that even in some quite heavy action, you're going to fire more than 100 rounds a minute is a practical rate of fire. You know, you're in an armoured fighting vehicle and that you know, your opponent is an armoured fighting vehicle or you know, more than likely if you're using the 0.5 inch and therefore you're probably going to get like five, 10 round bursts um, and be moving. So you, you, you 100 rounds a minute after you've relayed and, and, and then having to change the ammunition belt as well. So practically uh, the, the rate of fire is, is nowhere near that 500 to 600 rounds a minute. An argument we make with the 450 to 650 rounds a minute for the infantry gun or the 1200 rounds per minute for the MG42. They're not practical rates of fire. They're cyclic technical rates of fire. Um, the 0.5 inch Vickers though as well also has a selector lever so you can fire at repetition. You know, quite unique in the Vickers MG uh, range uh, of British service weapons. You, you can do that select fire capability on it as well. Gareth Davis pops up with a question on the Sentinel tank. Why oh why did it have that distinctive MG housing? Who knows Gareth? I expect the inventor is still laughing to this day. Um, you can only imagine that it had superior deflection capabilities for, uh, you know, for, for, for incoming shot. Who knows why? You know, it's certainly distinctive. It keeps us talking. Gareth did a video the night before me on armoured experiments. So if you haven't had a chance to watch that, please do go back and do so. The Great Dominion again comes up with how many rounds of Mauser 7.92mm ammunition did the British armaments industry end up making to feed the Beezer? Great question. We've really dug into the archives uh, on small arms ammunition production uh, for various reasons. Something we're going to write some research papers on uh, because if you try and ask me how many rounds of 303 was produced in the Second World War, there's, there's a lot of answers, so we're going to get stuck into the research on that. But let's share a picture with you. This photo is from the National Archives, uh, one of the files there, and it's the planned capacity of components filling and loading in the UK in millions per month uh, in the Second World War. So this is from a civil service document written down, and this was the planned capacity. And you can see here that we've got 7.92 millimetre. And at Woolwich, for example, you've got 4 million and... Um, 17.1 million uh, you know, for the different factories. See, so this is um, cases, bullets, ball, uh, filling, and then loading. So 17.1 million cases, for example, of 303, 17.1 million loading. Uh, 4 million of 7.92 and 4 million of for loading. So you, 
if you go to the other end, we're still going to follow these these two lines. The total capacity uh, in the UK was 205.8 million for um there we go you just about read that 205.8 million for 303 and 40.3 million um or 40.8 maybe uh yeah 40.8 million rounds per month of 7.92 so that is 20% of the small arm, uh, 20% of the 303 amount. So you can see that absolutely huge number really, when you consider the, the widespread use of 303 in aircraft as well, and then the limited use of 7.92, just in armored fighting vehicles. So 7.92 Mauser, because um, it's a Mauser design, 40.8 million per month is our capacity versus 206.8, 205.8, um, maybe 208.8. Oh, my, the, the bit blurry once you zoom in this far. Uh, but you know, so 20% of the 303 capacity. I think that's quite an interesting number and something we'll be researching more in the future. Pat61 is back with another question. Is that a circular mag on the Bren? Yes, it is. It's a 100 round mag for anti-aircraft use. It enables you to track aircraft um, without needing a number two to chase round after you with 30 round mags. Uh, so yes, yeah, circular circular mags on the Bren for anti-aircraft use. World of Tone is asking cloth belts versus metal link. Yep, uh, so the Brownings are using cloth belts. Uh, the Beezers are using metal link. Yeah, it's all, dis all non-disintegrating uh, so that there's no little linker and everything firing flying around the, um, the uh, inside the turret and everything. But um, yeah, so it's all non-disintegrating metal link if it is metal link at all. Uh, let's say it could, be, it could be the cloth belts of the Browning. Nicholas Patton now, was it all tracer? No, it wasn't all tracer. So the you know, you'd have mixed semi-armor piercing, armor piercing, ball, ammunition. These are ammunition belts were generally mixed four to one ball to tracer. You don't you know it's it's still um uh anti-personnel, you know, that's what those machine guns are there for. It, it's for anti-personnel. So the majority of it is ball ammunition. You don't need to waste anything on or you know, waste incendiary and, and stuff like that on that. Um, so your, your standard ammunition box would be ball, but 7.92 millimeter was made in incendiary and armor piercing and everything as well. So, so lots of different variants, but generally ball to tracer, a four to one mix. Another great question from the Great Dominion. Is it true that captured German ammunition was used to supply units with visas? Um, not directly. I think that would have had to gone back through ordnance. Uh, you know, ordnance companies to be checked because it could be sabotage could be useless could be poor quality um and, and, and by the time that you are capturing large amounts of german ammunition your supply chain is excellent so you don't need to it is worth noting though that in the regimental hand regimental officers handbook to the german army produced in 1943 it does talk about 7.92 millimeter being compatible uh between german ammunition and and the british pieces so you know the capability was there uh but in practical terms i don't by the time that you are capturing enough to use why would you bother because your supply chain make sure that you're not going to get inconsistency i'd like to see further evidence of it being used um if that's available another one from great dominion were all brownings in british tanks chamber to 306 or were some converted to 303 nope they were all uh 306 there were 303 brownings and they were british made but they were for aircraft use only they did not put those in tanks um after the Second World War, we did have 7.62 millimeter Brownings in our tanks, uh, certainly Centurion, um, I think, um, I say certainly, uh, and then AVRE all the way up to uh, Operation Granby, 1991, you know, Gulf War, uh, they were still there in, in some of the tanks then, so 7.62 in some of those Brownings at that point, but otherwise they were always 30 6 Coffee13 asks, which MG did the tank crews prefer using? Uh, I genuinely don't know. Uh, the, the the research that we were able to do to put this video together and what I found since is quite silent on it. Yeah, you know, the, there's no preference, I suppose, because they weren't. It, it wasn't a choice. It depended on which tank they were in. So if they were in a Churchill, they had a Beezer. If they were in a Sherman, they had a Browning. They didn't. Yeah, you know, they might have preferred different tanks if they had the opportunity to use different tanks, but different units are set up differently. Um, so I don't think there'd be much crossover. Uh, maybe at the training establishments, maybe that's somewhere we can look for that information. But otherwise, they're just silent on it. I'd love to know more. Um, it would be interesting to find out. 
Joshua Wood asks, did the British have a round similar to the American 50 cal round? Um, no, not really. So the 50 cal Vickers was a shorter round. Uh, we, we showed that earlier in, in the um, original interview. Uh, it didn't have the penetration power. We did have a, another commercial 50 cal round uh, that, that wasn't adopted by the War Office. It was for the Class D and Class D Star Vickers. That was much more powerful. Um, we decided to go for the, you know, uh, for the 0.5, um, 0.5 inch uh, that yeah was, was shorter and had less penetration power uh, in the armor piercing roll because that's all we needed. I say less penetration, that's, that's probably wrong. Less, less, less distance, so not necessarily the same thing. Um, but no, quite simply, no, we didn't have a similar round to the American 50 cal, uh, and we just adopted the American 50 cal Browning. Quite a specific um, sort of ammunition uh, question from the Great Dominion. So was the 7.92 millimeter regarded as a more powerful or ballistically superior round in comparison to the 30 or 6 or 3 or 3 or about the same? It's a rifle caliber round. I mean, they're, they're all sort of uh, uh, designed to do the same job, really. So 30 or 6 is generally thought of as ballistically you know, lacking from the 303 in some cases, you know, overpowered um, and a completely different ballistic curve. The, uh, the 7.92 just does it just you know different countries development I don't think there's much thought about you know what um, what they do it clearly has a flatter trajectory than the 303 mark 8 Z which was used with the Vickers in the infantry roll that reaches out to 4500 yards uh, all of the others seem to suit about 2700 to 3000 yards so not much difference to pick between them when they're used in the tank roll just because it's a good opportunity to do so in the comments. So thank you very much for the, for the kind comments about my knowledge. Yeah, it's 25 years in the making, a um, little bit longer perhaps now, I'm getting old. Uh, I really do appreciate that. You know, I want to share this. I want to get this out of my head. You know, it, 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 there's no point me just knowing it and taking it to the grave. Um, although hopefully that's a fair few years off. You know, I'm writing more, um, doing research. We're going to write this this sort of secondary armament thing up a little bit as a, as a bit of a paper. Um, I'm an academic, so you know, I do write journal articles and, and things like that that quite a bit um perhaps not as much as my employers would like but you know i'm busy doing machine gun stuff too so if we combine the two maybe th these things will happen more but thank you so much for those very kind comments about what i know an interesting question there from nicholas Patton. any tables on tank mg ordnance totals used um not that jump out at me off the top of my head uh yeah you get some some sort of supply tables you know we, we talked about how much capacity we have we've got to dig into the uh dig into the research dig into the archive material for that for a little bit more sometimes you get like operation specific tables that they stockpiled 7.92 to, to 10 times you know x number of thousands of rounds um but yeah not, not specific enough nicholas so that's a great question and one we'll try and uh, try and answer in the future for you the great dominion coming back with the questions so was the boys anti-tank rifle ever standard equipment on any british armored vehicle e.g universal carriers yes absolutely so the scout variant of the of the carrier um and the early universal carriers they all have a, a boys anti-tank rifle as well as their bren like machine guns the marmon harrington armored cars the rolls royce fords um, all those armoured cars, you know, the wheeled stuff uh, there, they generally use the boys' anti-tank rifle as well. Um, I'm even thinking like the likes of the Morris Light Reconnaissance car. That has a boys' anti-tank rifle in it as well. So, you know, if it doesn't have any integral anti-armour capability and it's armoured, uh, they, they try and give it a boys. So, yeah, great question. Uh, something that I don't think happens then with the Pia. So, you know, bear in mind when we talk about you know, Morris Light Recce car, you know, that carries on into 1944-45 probably some of the last use of the boys uh anti-tank rifle actually on those cars so um yeah they don't they don't get re-equipped with here so that's an interesting question uh yep thanks for that the question from frank de rudder is the bren gun better than the us bar so subjective frank um probably do several youtube videos whole week series on that one uh we will look at it uh, I will look at it again as part of that academic research as to how to evaluate these things to make sure we're comparing apples with apples. Quite simply, the Bren Gun 30 round magazine above the uh, above the chamber, BAR you know, 20 round magazine underneath. Originally being BAR originally designed as an automatic rifle, hence the name uh, Bren light machine gun designed as a light machine gun. If you want more automatic fire. 
sustained fire uh, or a little bit suppressive um, sustained fire then then the brain gun is a light machine gun the USBAR is pressed into service you know originally designed without a bipod um, it, it, it tries to do a job that it wasn't designed to do so um, you know it isn't comparing apples with apples in this case so we'll try and have a, a, a better conversation that, about that and a better answer for you at a later date. There we go uh, thank you very much for all of those questions thank you very much for watching the original video and thank you very much for watching this one I hope it's been useful I hope this sort of follow-up idea actually works uh, I'll apologize for the sound quality for the dips in and out um, you know the equalization on on the microphones that I'm using at the moment aren't great uh, but you know the only way to improve that is to spend money on it and we can spend money on it please do support us on patreon uh, as i said www.patreon.com forward slash vickers mg much many many benefits um digital archive previews no monetization on the videos those sorts of things as well as physical benefits postcards posters dvds uh, as you sort of progress up through the tiers so hopefully some of you will do that uh, that would be great hopefully you'll be subscribed to our channel wwtv uh you know really important we'll be be on again with woody in the future i'm sure he can't get rid of me that easily and i've got lots more to say on machine guns so thank you for watching thank you for watching please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel please support us on patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future i look forward to hearing from you